All right, everything you need to know about To Kill a Mockingbird, Chapter 11. Now, this is a big chapter, so I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can. Now that you've read Chapter 11, let's dive into what's happened and what it's all about. This chapter moves us further into the neighborhood, and we meet Miss Henry Lafayette DeBose. The background we get about her is that her house is in between the Finch's house and downtown, so they have to walk past it if they go to meet Atticus or wander the town. So she's old and in a wheelchair and has a black woman attendant named Jessie. The kids think Ms. DeBose might keep a pistol under her shawl on her lap. She basically yells at the kids every time they go by. Everything from calling Scout an ugly girl to saying that Atticus lets them run wild in the streets. Atticus tells them that she's old and very sick and to just ignore it and to not get mad. Atticus knows how to handle her when he comes by. He just pays her compliments and basically disarms her venom and she doesn't really know what to say. The action picks up the day after Jem turns 12 and he wants to spend his money in town. Ms. DeBose attacks them right away when they go by. That they're truant from school even though it's Saturday. That she's going to tell Atticus that they broke something in Miss Maudie's yard. Basically that Jem is headed for reform school. Jem does pretty well at ignoring her and tries to get Scout to move along until Ms. DeBose gets ugly about Atticus saying that he's in the courthouse lying for... Yep, you guessed it, she busts out the N-word. Jem noticeably reacts, so Ms. DeBose spouts off a few more similar taunts and insults. Jem continues on into town but is fuming the whole time. He buys his steam engine and Scout a baton. On the way home, Ms. DeBose isn't outside, so Jam just kind of snaps. He grabs Scout's baton, runs up into her yard, and uses it to whack all the flowers off of her bushes. He then breaks Scout's baton on his knee. Scout is screaming by this time, so Jem pulls her hair and says he's not sorry and he'd do it again. When she won't stop, Jem kicks her too. He feels kind of bad, so they go home, and there's nothing to do but wait for Atticus to come home. When Atticus does come home, he calls for Jem, showing him the broken baton in one hand and shredded flowers in another. When asked if he's responsible, Jem admits that he did it and proceeds to explain what Ms. DeBose had said that caused him to snap. Atticus tells him that he knows Jem and Scout are getting grief for what Atticus is doing, but that Ms. DeBose is a sick old lady, so there's really no excuse for him to do this. He makes Jem go to talk to her, and Scout stays at home with Atticus. Scout is, Attic is angry at Atticus because she thinks he's sending, she, he's sending Jem to his certain doom, especially since Jem was in a way sticking up for Atticus. Atticus warns Scout that they're going to have to keep their cool in harder circumstances during the summer when the actual trial is taking place. He says it knows, he knows it'll be hard on them, but hopes that when they're older, they're going to understand that he was doing the right thing. He tells Scout that he couldn't go to church and worship God if he didn't help Tom Robinson that this is a case that goes to the heart of who he is as a man. Scout questions if he's really right with what he's doing when so many people think he's wrong. Atticus tells her he has to live with himself first, even if people have a different opinion. And he says this great quote, that the one thing that doesn't abide by majority rule is one's conscience. When Jem comes home, he says he apologized to Ms. DeBose, even though he's not sorry, and that he'd clean the yard up and he'd help the bushes grow back. Interestingly, Atticus tells him that Jem shouldn't say he's sorry if he's not, but that Ms. DeBose is old and ill and can't be responsible for everything she says. Jem adds that she requested that Jem come to read to her every day for two hours for a month. Atticus says, well, then that's what you're going to do. Jem protests because her dark is scary and dark and creepy, so Atticus gives a funny answer that Jem should like that. He can just pretend he's at the Radley house since he wants to go there so badly. So Jem and Scout show up at Ms. DeBose's house the next Monday, and we get the most description from what happens there from the first visit. The house smells funny, and they go into the bedroom where she's covered in quilts. They have to get really close to her to read, and Scout tells us she's pretty nasty looking. After insulting Scout, she has Jem start reading, and at first she's all over Jem's reading, correcting him and criticizing him. But that starts to become less and less until Scout notices that Ms. DeBose is no longer saying anything or paying any attention. She's just having kind of this quiet fit on her bed and thrashing about and drooling. The alarm, call off, the alarm clock eventually goes off and Jessie comes in to give Ms. DeBose her medicine, sending Jem and Scout home. The first day sets a pattern where they show up, Ms. DeBose, Ms. DeBose insults Atticus and or Scout or the family, 
Jem reads for a while and gets criticized, and then Ms. Debo starts to have these fits in the bed until the alarm clock goes off and Jesse sends them away. So one evening during this time, Scout has an important conversation about the term that's been thrown around, that Atticus is a N-word lover. Atticus tells her that people use that term, the people that use that term are whites who believe that Atticus is favoring African Americans over them. He tells Scout that he doesn't take it as an insult because he is one, and he tries his best to actually love everybody. Basically, he's trying to take power away from the word and says that people who use it are ignorant and trashy. He wants her to ignore Ms. DeBose as she has enough troubles of her own. So now, about a month into the reading, Atticus shows up. He didn't see the kids and thought they might still be at Ms. DeBose's house, and it turns out it's like 5.15. Scout realizes that the alarm was going off slightly later each day, and it took longer for Ms. DeBose to go into one of her fits. The day Atticus shows up, it's been over two hours with no fit and no alarm. She asks Atticus for one more week just to be sure. We don't know to be sure of what. Uh, and Atticus, despite Jem's protests, asks Jem to keep reading. We don't know yet what's really going on. But for the next week, there is no alarm and Miss DeBose is her cranky, nasty, mean, ugly self uh, the whole time. Even asking Jem if he regretted destroying her flowers, which of course by this point he really does. But Jem has learned to look at her with calm and detachment and not let her get to him. After that week, Ms. DeBose releases them. Later in the spring, about a month later, Atticus gets a phone call, ends up leaving for a while, and comes back with a candy box telling the kids that Ms. DeBose died. At this point, we get the story. Ms. DeBose had been sick a long time, and during this time, she'd become addicted to morphine. When she found out she had a few months to live, she didn't want to die an addict. Jem, coming to read to her was her way of fighting through the addiction and the withdrawal symptoms. Jem opens the box that, that Atticus has, and it's a new flower from the bushes that Jem had chopped. Jem throws it on the ground and interprets it as her still tormenting him and gets really upset. Atticus tries to soothe him, saying he thinks Miss DeBose meant it to say that everything now is all right. Atticus tells him that Miss DeBose was the bravest person he knew and that he wanted Jem to see what real courage was. That even though you know you're going to lose, you try anyway. Jem can't believe that Atticus respects her, but this is the reason why. Ms. DeBose was going to die, but she didn't want to be owned by her addiction, and she came out victorious over her addiction, even though she still died. So what do we take from this chapter? You can see there are a lot of lessons here. For one, there's a lot to learn about courage. Jem has to face his fear of Ms. DeBose. Atticus is concerned that Jem thinks that Atticus is so brave because he can fire a gun so well, and he wants him to see what real courage really is, which is why he tells him about Ms. DeBose's struggle to break her addiction when she's dying. We can see that it also reflects Atticus's decision to defend Tom Rod Robinson. Atticus has already told us that he knows he's going to lose the case, but he's doing what's right anyway. This chapter also speaks to the theme of integrity. Atticus's talk with Scout is a key example. He cannot turn his back on Tom Robinson and have a clear conscience at the same time. He's willing to do what's honorable despite the risks and consequences. Lastly, we see compassion and tolerance. Despite how ugly, cruel, and mean Ms. DeBose is, let's be real, she's a horrible person. Atticus still tries to be gracious to her, respect her right to her opinion, and even help her with her struggle. By every right, Atticus could shun her, uh, hate her, badmouth her, Yet we see him turn the other cheek and rise above her treatment of him. We see growth and maturity in Jem as well, as he learns to deflect Ms. DeBose's attacks with calm and detachment. Jem is growing up. If you have any questions or comments, you can ask down below in the box.